What's up guys, welcome back. My name is Charles, owner of MX Revival and MXRevival.com and today we are going to be putting some big fat pegs on the old 89 RM250. Okay, wow, we're gonna put some foot pegs on a dirt bike. What's the big deal? Well, if you have an old bike, you already know and if you don't have an old bike, well, the stock pegs, they're like chopsticks. I honestly have no idea how this was ever even a thing. I mean, what is that, man? So today we're gonna take these super tiny little hunks of junk and we're going to be doing some pretty big upgrades if you ask me I've got a brand new set of the IMS super stock foot pegs and the pro series foot peg will work as well in this particular application there's just one problem which is what we are going to tackle today these don't actually fit the bike straight away they are not a full bolt-on by any stretch of the imagination so we will be doing some drilling and some modifications together and I really hope this kick starts you guys for other bikes that I may not be going over so that you guys can also maybe get creative and graft some newer, bigger pegs onto your old bikes as well, especially if they're vintage bikes that you enjoy riding. To me, this is just, I don't want it. This foot peg video applies specifically to the 1989 and presumably the 1990 RM125 and 250. We missed full bolt-on status by just one year. That's because in 1991, IMS actually came out with pegs, the ones we're using, that will bolt directly onto the RM125 and RM250 again 1991 through let's see 2002 these also fit the drz 400 from 2000 to current i'm assuming current because this says up through 19 and if i had to guess this was probably just manufactured a while ago and the 19 is probably the same as the 22 or 23 make sure to double check before you take my word for it but it's likely and now in the beginning ims sent me these pegs because they thought they would work on this bike turns out they don't so it was really cool to be able to work with them show them what i found out what to use, what to drill, everything, so they can help other people with 89s and 90s. And I'll go ahead and send them this video when I'm done as well. Hopefully it will be a great resource. So real quick guys, if you're going to upgrade the foot pegs on your 89 or 90, RM125 or RM250, you're gonna need the following tools. And don't worry guys, I'm also gonna leave you a complete parts list in the description below, all the part numbers for what I used. As stated in this video, I went ahead and used all the DRZ parts, pegs, pins, washers, cotters, springs, all that stuff. So if you have this exact bike, the parts list is gonna be down below for you. So guys, here are the tools you're gonna to need if you are working on this specific project. It may work as well for other bikes, but on the RM250 1989, you're gonna go ahead and grab yourself a drill, a 3 8 drill bit, of course, some big fat IMS super stock or pro series foot pegs, again for the DRZ. Then you're gonna want the DRZ peg pin, you're going to want the DRZ spring, the DRZ washer, and then a cotter pin. Probably doesn't matter what make or model you get it from or for. You're going to need a little bit of waterproof grease. I just like to use this on the drill bit. Helps it cut a little faster, keep things cooler, keep your drill bit alive. And then lastly, well, you're just going to need a garbage can for this old peg because you don't need it anymore. And guys, before we get started, if you're looking for this exact peg, it is part number 275511. You can buy them on the IMS website, you can buy them on Rocky Mountain, they're pretty much available everywhere. So let's get to it. Oh, and real quick, I'm forgetting two of the most important things. You need eye protection and ear protection. Don't be an idiot and forget like me. You only get one set of ears, one set of eyes, and you wanna keep them. Let's go ahead and get to work. Okay guys, it's go time. As you can see, I already have this side done. And reason being, I wanted to make sure this was gonna work, all the drilling, the fitment. Before I actually film this video for you, I am happy to say that it worked out flawlessly. Everything works really great. The platform is huge. And we're also gonna go over some caveats about this, some things it does to the chassis, some changes when you're done. So towards the end, I'll go ahead and explain what those are. Otherwise, guys, if you missed it, we also just replaced all the swing arm bearings in this swing arm. It was frozen, absolutely solid in the bike. It took a lot of heat, fire, air tools you name it to get it out so if you'd like to watch that video it's in the description below for you and then this little guy right here this thing was snapped clean off i'm going to tell you guys more about that towards the end of the video and where you can find that how-to video otherwise let's go ahead and get started all right guys so as we get going you're going to see a few additional tools i did not have up on the bench first one's going to be an eight millimeter allen key japanese bikes use this almost exclusively to get the rear brake pedal pin out. It's gonna need some needle nose too. We're gonna be dealing with a few cotter pins in this job. And also before you spin this out, check the back of this. There's usually another cotter pin or some sort of retention clip. And if you just spin this out without pulling the pin out first, you'll shear it off, maybe damage the threads 
In our case today, we have a cotter pin back there. It was so flimsy, I was able to pull it out by hand. We'll replace that with a better one. Then you can go ahead and spin this out of the way. As you can see, we're not gonna be able to get drills in here, drill bits without getting this pedal out of the way first. We'll also get a chance to grease this now that it's out. These do like a little bit of waterproof grease. And that's all it really takes to take these off. Next up, and most Japanese bikes to this day still use the same system, we need to get the cotter pin out, followed by the washer, spring, and then everything comes apart. This cotter pin is particularly mangled and pretty rusty and ugly. So once you straighten that sucker out, you can usually grab a hold of it and weasel the entire pin out, and the washer will then become accessible as well. Those are trash. After that, you can push the pin out. This one's pretty rusty, still coming out okay. Sometimes you need to persuade it a little bit. And the answer is violence. You can wiggle the peg too. It makes everything fall right apart. Man, that sucker's ugly and ready for replacement anyhow. Look at that. Look at that pathetic little foot peg. That just cracks me up, man. All right, it's time to make the magic happen. So you're gonna go ahead and grab your drill. In our case, this is a 3 8 drill bit, which is close. The pin is actually just just a little bit bigger than the drill bit. So we're gonna hog it out a little bit after. You'll see, you don't wanna take your drill bit, go ahead and get it slathered up with some waterproof grease. Like I said earlier, this is gonna keep your drill bit alive, keep things clean, keep them moving easily. And on this bike, we can't really access this hole from the top. We have the engine in the way. So we're gonna come in from the bottom. Some of you guys are into that anyways. And then go ahead and just start drilling. Just go real slow, take your time. There's no rush here. And do your absolute best to keep your drill in a straight line with the hole you're drilling. You don't want to go through it diagonally. Just do your best. For the most part, the hole is going to act like a pilot and guide the bit anyways, but you can uh, drill this a little crooked if you're not careful. So again, take your time, check it once in a while, add fresh grease once in a while, and before you knew it, you uh, will be right through this little peg mount. Guys, I'm getting ahead of myself here. I need to take a quick measurement so I can show you the difference towards the end of the video. So we have a three and a half inches roughly to the top of these teeth and something's gonna change when we put the new peg in. So I almost blew it on that. There is gonna be a difference absolutely worth mentioning when we're done. And there you have it. We are through. We just missed the engine case, thankfully. Now, as I mentioned a few minutes ago, the hole is just gonna be barely smaller than this peg pin, as you can see does not go through yet. So we're gonna use the drill bit and hog this out a little bit. I don't know if there's such a thing as a metric drill bit. There may be, I never heard of one, never seen one, but if that's the case, you could always measure the pin, get yourself a caliper like so. You can measure the pin and then find an appropriate drill bit in millimeters if such a thing even exists, I'm not sure. But most people are already gonna have a 3 8 drill bit around. It's just very common. So we're gonna go ahead and get back down and we are going to try our best to hog out evenly, pulling left, right, up, down, actually just going in a circle to hog this out a little bit more and just check once in a while to see if uh, the peg pin is going to fit. See if it fits yet. No, not quite. And you just keep doing this until the pin goes all the way through. Even pressure is the key. You want to make sure you don't oblong this hole. Do your very best to keep it round. And in a few short minutes, we're going to get to the point where this actually drops right in. A little bit better. I can actually get this in there about an eighth of an inch now. So like I said, just keep doing that. Eventually it's gonna work out. All right, I think we're about there. Let's see. Oh, it's perfect. And this thing's still pretty snug. We'd like it to be on the snug side rather than the loose side. So it took about four minutes, good to go. So pretty easy stuff now, guys. I'm gonna put a little bit of grease on the pin. Just lube it up a little bit. That'll pass through and hit some of that bare steel. Not that it matters, you know, eventually this is gonna get all rusty anyways, but this will help us put everything together as well. We've got our pin, we've got our peg, we're gonna need the spring, but look, awesome. Man, that's so cool, big, big pegs. So on these bikes, the spring is actually on the bottom of the pin, outside of the peg. A lot of more modern bikes, the spring is actually inside the peg, like so. But this bike has a hole in the frame where the original pegs sort of post so they can get some spring action going on. And there is a trick with this spring because since it was never meant for this bike, it's gonna look a little different than the way it would on a 91 and up model. So we got our peg on, we got our pin through, and then you have to go ahead and take the spring, like the original 89 spring, stick it in the hole of the frame here, get the pin a little further through, and you sort of have to compress the spring 
and force this pin through, much like any other bike really. But this one's a little goofy and I'll show you why. There we go, so we are pretty much all together. Get that pin through just a little bit more, a little more love tappy. Okay, so here's the weird thing about these springs. As you guys can see, there's a hole in the back of the peg here. This is intended for the 91 and up spring for the bike was actually supposed to go on. Then there's also a little groove and the top of the peg here where the spring looks like it would sit, but again, it doesn't work out. There's an angle on this spring that prohibits that. So this is actually how it's going to end up in the very end. And as you can see, the spring is just kind of rested on the back side of the peg. It's not technically hooked into anything it was supposed to be hooked into, but it is still hooked in perfectly in such a way that everything works just great and the spring pushes the peg all the way back down to flat so everything in the end ends up looking like this and it works perfectly even though these springs aren't for this bike last stuff you need washer cotter pin you can go ahead and spin the peg pin by lifting the peg back and forth with a little pressure on whichever direction you want to go on the cotter pin get it to a really accessible point and you're just about done open that sucker up with your needle nose pliers get it to where you want it and that is a, a clean and complete peg install. And that's it. Last step, of course, is to get a little bit of grease back on this brake pedal pin. Go ahead and spin that pedal pin all the way back in, of course. And then we're going to put a better cotter pin in this when we're bottomed out. So check these cotter pins out. I got this entire kit from Harbor Freight. A couple dollars. It has <laughs> the, all the cotter pins you're going to need for the rest of your entire life. Let's try this one. Does it fit? Uh, yes it does. And it's nice and strong compared to the last one. Very good. You guys can also spin the pin to get the cotter pin where you want it to make it easier on your hands to bend the pin in the back and then bottom it out once you've finally got that cotter pin flexed and around the back of the bolt like you like it. Easy money. So guys, that is pretty much it. Although we do need to take a measurement. I think before I said three and a half and Actually, it's pretty much in the exact same spot to the back of the peg, but the front of the peg, because it is much wider and starts to drop as it goes forward, is three inches. So while these pegs are technically at the same angle when they're installed, new pegs or old pegs, they do end up being a little bit further down in the front because they are wider. And that could actually be a really good thing for you if you're a taller guy like me. I'm a little more than six foot tall, so if my boots are a little further down in the front, that just makes the cockpit open up ever so slightly and dealing with dirt bikes where things are measured in millimeters, that could be actually a really great change because it's substantial three versus three and a half. And as always, lift stand, saving my ass every time. If you guys need one of these, they've been out of stock for a long, long time. I just threw them back on the website. They're finally back in stock. They're only a couple hundred bucks. This one's probably three or four years old, hasn't leaked. It's seen countless bikes. And I even like the wheels, even though I thought I was gonna completely hate it. If the bike's disassembled, I can just roll away at any point in the shop and get it out of the way so guys that is it super easy job super easy way to get bigger pegs on your 89 and 90 rm 250s 125s like i said earlier probably some other makes and models if you're creative i'm super pumped to try these out i know they're going to feel worlds better than those tiny little crappy where did it even go man look at this thing <laughs> That is so dorky. Oh my God. Anyways, guys, that pretty much wraps it up. Now you know how to do it. And I really hope it was helpful for you. All right, guys, that's a wrap. These pegs are absolutely massive in comparison to the stock pegs. I'm looking really forward to giving them a shot out at the track. And speaking of that, we still need to tackle the blown fork seals. So that will probably be in the next 1989 RM250 video. I have all the parts to get the job done a few new special tools, and we'll be going over that very soon. But these new super stock pegs from IMS should put this bike just about on par with any other modern bike I own. My stock 2020 RMZ 450 foot pegs are really close to these in size and dimensions. And so I think it's safe to say we brought the old RM 250 into the modern era as far as foot platforms are concerned. And if you guys have this bike, but you wanna get a little more creative, I went down a well-beaten path with a well-known company, IMS for pegs. But now that you guys know pegs from the DRZ are gonna fit this bike, you can probably find something a little bit fancier, maybe something billet, maybe something anodized, maybe something even a little bigger. And so if you can't find something like that on your favorite parts retailer, you can probably head over to eBay or Amazon and pick something up for the DRZ that really suits you. So just use your brain, get creative, and you'll find something that works just right. Now, real quick, I wanna encourage you guys to go check out the MX Revival Instagram page. I just threw up a really cool reel where I had a broken off chain adjuster in the back of the swing arm. And so I really needed to get that out. It's a very common thing. 
the bolts break, they get real rusty, stuck in the swing arm, and then they snap off when you try to adjust your rear axle. So I think you'll really like that reel. I'll go ahead and just leave a link for that down below as well. I do a lot more behind the scenes stuff on Instagram than I do on YouTube with this long form content. Anyways, the video was super fun, so go check it out when you have some free time. And guys, that pretty much wraps up today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found it useful. If you wanna check out some more MX Revival tips and tricks on bikes, you can go ahead and check out this playlist right here. Don't forget to check out all the links and resources I've left for you in the video description below. And having said all that, I appreciate Appreciate you. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, shred safe and I will see you guys soon.